Hello everyone, my name is Jin Yang. In this video, I will present our work about improved guess and determine and uh, distinguishing attacks on Snowway. This was one work finished uh, when I was a PhD student at Lund University, and it was a joint work with Thomas Johansson from Lund University and uh, Alexander Maximov from Ericsson Research. So my presentation would uh, follow this outline. I would first uh, uh, give a short introduction to the confidentiality and uh, integrity protection in 5G uh, and the stream sign for Snowy we have designed for that. Then I will present uh, our two guess and determine attacks against Snowy and our linear criminalistic results of it. And finally, I will give a short conclusion. So let's start uh, with the uh, introduction. The confidentiality and the integrity protection in cellular networks protects the data transmission between users and base stations by encrypting the data and adding authentication tags. This is like adding some security tunnel over the wireless channel, as shown in the figure. So each user and base station will share a secret key, and if they have some data to be transmitted, they will use this secret key as one input to a 3GPP standardized algorithm uh, to encrypt and authenticate the data. So in 4G, there are three such uh, uh, ciphers, which are Snow 3G, SUC, and AES. So they are all used to provide a 128-bit secret level and are usually implemented in hardware because that can provide high speeds. So they work very well in 3, 4G, but how about 5G? When we come to 5G, there are some new requirements on the confidentiality and integrity algorithms. The first requirement is about the speed. So they should be able to provide a speed of not less than 20 gigabits per second in software. The reason why we consider software is that um, uh, these, the confidentiality and integrity protection in 5G is likely moved to the cloud and implemented in software. Uh, besides, the 5G downlink peak data rate is 20 gigabits per second. The second requirement is about the security. So they should be able to provide a 256-bit security level to resist against content cryptanalysis. For the 4G algorithms, Snow 3G and SUC, they might not be the best candidates for 5G. The first reason is that there exist academic attacks against them that are faster than exhaustive case search. And the second reason is that their speeds in software are mostly below 10 gigabits per second, while 5G requires 20 gigabits per second. So uh, based on the motivation, motivation in 2019, we designed a successor cipher of Snow 3G called Snowy, intended for 5G use. The picture shows the uh, uh, structure of Snowy, and we can see it uh, follows the design rational of Snow 3G with the linear part and a nonlinear part. The linear part consists of two electrodes. We call them electrode A and electrode B. Uh, they are all defined over the finite fields of size 2 to the power of 16. Uh, each electrode has 16 stages, and mm, so this gives the electrode 512 bits in total. We can regard the F just uh, state as four 128-bit uh, uh, registers. That is, for example, the lower part of F A is regarded as A0, while the higher part of F A is uh, denoted as A1. So these two F just are fading to each other. For example, A0 is fading to B15, and B0 is fading to A15. So we have carefully chosen the feedback polynomials such that such a construction can provide the maximum pure rate. We also consider the uh, implementation efficiency and the cryptography uh, uh, properties. So each time for updating uh, the alpha clocks eight times, and after that to 128-bit uh, tabs T1 and T2 are sent to the FSM. For the FSM, it takes T1 and T2 as the input, then outputs a Kithlin word, which is also 128-bit. It also has three registers, 
R1, R2, and R3. They are all 128 bit. Then we use two AES encryption rounds as large S boxes to update the registers. For example, R2 is updated from R1 through one AES encryption round, and also R3 is updated from R2 through another AES encryption round. While R1 is updated from R2, R3, and T2 through operations like XOR, addition, and a permutation sigma. And here shows the, the expression of sigma. For example, the first byte, the fourth byte is moved to the first uh, position, while the first byte is moved to the fourth position, and so on. When we use no way to encrypt data, we need to first uh, perform the initialization phase. During this phase, the cipher loads the key and IV to the F jars, then runs the cipher for 16 rounds without any, giving any output. After that, the cipher starts to produce key swim words. So in each iteration, it first outputs a 128-bit key swim words, then it updates the FSM part, and then updates the F sharp part. After that, it enters the next iteration until all the data is uh, encrypted. We also proposed an AEA mode to also uh, provide uh, authentication for the data. Since Snowway has been published, uh, there appeared uh, some uh, cryptanalysis results, uh, which include guess and return me attacks, linear cryptanalysis, integral uh, attacks, differential attacks, and so on. So in our paper, we proposed two guess and return attacks of complexity to the power of 384 and to the power of 378, which are lower than existing results. We also proposed a distinguishing attack, uh, but against a simplified version of Snowway with complexity to the power of 303. One advantage of our uh, uh, distinguishing attack is that it uh, does not need uh, long key swims, but only need uh, many short key swims. So next, I will present more details of the two guess and determine attacks. The basic idea of a guess and de determine attack is to guess some variables, determine others based on pub some publicly low relations. Uh, in an external evaluation report of Snowway, the authors proposed a guess and determine attack. So they regard the uh, internal state of Snowway as seven 128-bit variables. Then they first guess three variables, R1, R2, and R3. And based on the guessed values, they can determine the values of B0 and B1 and A0. And in the end, they need to guess the final variable A1. So the guess and uh, determine process it can be uh, illustrated as a tree, and each branch is the uh, guess and determine path. Since the guessing basis involves four variables, so the complexity is to the power of 512. So in our paper, we have one observation that if a variable appears twice in an equation with some long linear operations in between, then this variable may have zero solutions. Then for this uh, guess and determine pass, we should just chunk them instead of going to the end. So in our first uh, guess and de determine attack, in the first step, we need to guess uh, R1, R2, and R3. Uh, with complexity to the power of 384. And uh, this step is similar to the existing guess and determine attack. Then we can determine the values of B0 and B1, and A0 and A1 remain unknown. The second step is to determine the values of A0. Um, we found a conflicting equation for A0, which is showing uh, in the block. So we can see A0 appears twice in the equation, and there uh, some long linear operations in between, like uh, modular additions. So the question becomes how to efficiently get the solutions of A0, and uh, we don't want to loop it 
because that requires high complexity. In our paper, we proposed a 10-step algorithm to get the solutions of A0. The basic idea is to divide A0 into bytes and then categorize them into 10 groups of equations and get the solutions recursively with considering carries, for example. Uh, the figure shows how we compute the uh, solutions of each group. Uh, we compute the solutions from right to the left. When we compute the solution, when we get the solutions of the equations on the right, we can automatically get the values of the carries, and these values of carries will be used to solve the equations uh, on the left. Uh, for each group of equations, we can use lookup tables to get the to quickly get the solutions, and the maximum size of table is two to the power of sixty-eight to 256 times 20. We experimentally computed the value, uh, the probability of finding the solutions, which is 2 to the power of minus 3.91. And uh, the average number of guess, uh, valid guess and determined paths is 1. So till now, we have uh, on average 2 to the power of 384 uh, solutions, and A1 still remains unknown. So our last step is to determine the value of A1. And luckily, we can find another conflicting equation for A1, uh, as shown in the block. And we can see it has quite a similar uh, form to the equation for A0. And we can use the same way to derive the solutions of A1. The results are the same. So that is, there is on average one valid guess and determine pass. Uh, so, mm, in our first guess and determine attack, we guess the values of R1, R2, and R3, determine the values of B0 and B1, and solve the A0 and A1 using the 10-step algorithm with little complexity. So the total complexity is 2 to the power of 384. So we were wondering if we can exploit more keystream uh, symbols to further reduce the complexity. And in our second uh, guess and determine attack, we also used uh, the case mean word z at clock t minus 2. So we found uh, another conflicting equation for another uh, intermediate variable, b0 at uh, clock t minus 1. We computed the probability of finding the solutions of b0 at clock t minus 1, which is 2 to the power of minus 5.84. So uh, only when B0 at clock T minus 1 has solutions, we will uh, proceed with uh, guessing the three variables R1, R2, and R3. So the uh, complexity is computed as Pz times 2 to the power of 384, and uh, which is 2 to the power of 378. But, our, but this attack uh, leads a table of size 2 to the power of 128. So uh, to summarize our uh, guess and determine attacks, we found uh, three conflicting equations for A0, A1, and uh, another intermediate variable. And if we found there are no solutions for these area variables, we don't need to go, go deeper, but just a twist bike to get some other values. For example, at this guess and determine, uh, pause, we found that A0 does not have any solutions, then we don't need to go to A1. We just twist bike and go to another guess and determine pass. By doing this, we can reduce the complexity from 2 to the power of 512 to 2 to the power of 378. Next, I will show our uh, linear cryptanalysis of Snowway. Actually, we were considering a simplified version of Snowway in which the 32-bit uh, address are replaced with the XOR operations. Then the only uh, nonlinear operations in in this version is uh, Xbox. So we consider three consecutive case mean words, and the expressions are, uh, are shown here. Uh, B0, B1, A0 uh, are the contribution from the f -shar, and we want to cancel them out. So to cancel out B0 and B1, we only need to apply two linear 
uh, masks to the T minus one and the T specifically, or you apply the uh, mask L beta and H beta. So uh, when we add the three key spin words, the L beta B0 and H beta B1 will be cancelled. Then we need to cancel A0. Remember that uh, the expression of sigma is shown here. Uh, we can introduce 10 bytes based on the based on sigma. For example, the um, the byte E1 is uh, computed as W1 uh, X or W4. This is because uh, the the fourth byte is moved to position one, while the first byte is moved to position four. So if we add these two uh, bytes, uh, sigma A0 plus a zero at this position with these two positions will be cancelled out, cancelled out. So through this ten bytes, the electron contribution, uh, the electron contribution is cancelled. So now each uh, EI byte only contains bytes from R one, R two, R three, and their S boxes or inverse S boxes. And now it is possible to explore our bias locally. That means we only need uh, very short key streams. So we can introduce our noise n, which is a linear combination of the 10 bytes. And the CIs are linear masking matrices that we want to explore. So we can expand the expression of uh, the noise n. And A and B coefficient um, matrices are the coefficient matrices. So each row of the two vectors uh, den actually denotes to one uh, S box approximation. For example, the first uh, uh, row, the R1 uh, at byte zero, and S R1 at byte zero denotes the um, denote denotes one S box approximation, and the uh, coefficients of the S box approximation is determined by A, B, and also C. Uh, in this case, there are in total up to uh, 48 S approximations. And if a same column of CA and uh, CB here are zero, this uh, S corresponding S box approximation will be cancelled. So now our goal is to choose a, a linear masking matrix C to cancel as many S boxes as possible. Note that if T S box approximations can be cancelled, then C A and C B at these T columns should be zero. So we can choose different K columns of C A and C B and construct a matrix K. And we want to find a non-zero matrix C such that C times K equals to zero. That means the S boxes are cancelled. So what we need to do is to perform Gaussian elimination on K and at the same time perform the same operations on the identity matrix I. So if the last W rows of K are zero, the last W of I uh, becomes the C uh, mask. So then the value of W is also determined. Uh, in our attack, we can cancel uh, nine S boxes and W equals 16. Uh, we have computed the bias is to the power of 300 minus 303, and also then we ha can have a distinguishing attack of complexity to the power of 303. As I mentioned, our distinguishing attack does not need any uh, long key streams. And this is because the LFJ contribution A0, B0, B1 appears twice. Uh, in the in the expression of three key spin words, and then we can just cancel them locally. Uh, then it becomes possible to ex explore a bias to com combination between the three registers in the FSM. On the other hand, the last uh, electron uh, variable A one does not appear at all uh, in the in the expression of the three key spin words. So in our uh, proposed uh, SNOW-V variant, SNOW-VI, uh, based on this observation, we made uh, one modification. The two figures show uh, um, modifications in the FJ part of, of SNOW-V, um, and the, the modifications are colored. Uh, are colored. 
Uh, the red one denotes the modification which is relevant to our distinguishing attack. So specifically, we have moved the tap position of T2 from the lower part, uh, that is A0, to the higher part of alpha A, that is A1. And in this case, the value of A1 will be sent to the FSM uh, quickly and uh, then will appear in the key stream word. And, uh, it only appears once in the expression. And this means that the combina linear combination of the three keystream words will become balanced. And then it, uh, we cannot uh, explore our bias anymore. So um, finally, I would like to give a conclusion. Snowway is a cipher designed for 5G and it is currently under evaluation in the Sage group. In our paper, we proposed two gas and determine attacks against the snow wind with complexity to the power of 384 and to the power of 378. We pointed out uh, in our paper that the complexity of the gas and determine attacks should be determined by the number of the full gas and determine paths, and based on this, we designed gas uh, and determine strategies to explore conflicts and truncate some guess and determine paths. Uh, our linear hypnosis results into a distinguishing attack of, of a variant of Snow V uh, with complexity to the power of 303. And this attack results in one modification in Snow V I. In the end, I would like to mention a latest uh, attack uh, against Snow V. Uh, this work uh, was published uh, in the Eurocrypto conference this year. It was a correlation attack and the complexity is to the power of 240. Uh, this attack does not uh, pose a direct threat to the practi practical use of Snowway because uh, the length of the key stream, key streams in Snowway is limited to, to the power of 64. But it still indicates that Snowway can be improved. Uh, so in the uh, in a 3GPP document draft about uh, on Snow 3G and uh, Snow V, uh, it writes SA3 kindly asks Sage to assess the research paper mentioned above and determine any implications on Snow V. And subject to the outcome of the previous action, SA3 kindly asks Sage to proceed with the development of 256 bit of encryption and uh, integrate algorithm specifications based on SNOW-V. So this means th this indicates that SNOW-V might need some further modifications, um, and also and also it still indicates that SNOW-V can still be uh, promising for 5G use. So with that, I would end uh, my presentation. Thank you very much for the listening.